On today's show, Elon Musk says the Tesla pickup will get its reveal later this year and will have a distinct cyberpunk feel. Toyota says it will bring 10 new electric cars to market by 2025. And specifications for the next generation Renault Zoe, as well as a sneak photo, are leaked a week ahead of the official reveal. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean energy and transportation. It's good to be back after a week away at Fully Charged Live in the UK, so let's get on with it. We're going to start with the news that Hyundai's Nexo Fuel Cell sedan made its Kiwi debut this week at Field Days, just down the road from Hamilton. It's the first time a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle has made the trek to New Zealand, and Hyundai hopes to sell it alongside its battery electric Kona EV. While hydrogen won't be everyone's cup of tea, it is fantastic to see another zero tailpipe emission option come onto the market. More choice means more people making the switch away from fossil fuels, and I think you can agree that's great because it means a cleaner New Zealand for everyone. Just two weeks after we reported it was a thing, the marriage between Fiat Chrysler and Renault looks like it's not going to happen. While Nissan, Renault's current alliance partner and mutual shareholder, initially supported the merger with FCA, it reportedly withdrew its support recently. At the same time, a French union which voted against the deal caused some headaches for all parties. This deal would have given FCA a much needed leg up in the plug-in and autonomous vehicle segments. Now it's going to have to find an alternative. Tesla held its annual shareholder meeting this week and at it, we got treated to plenty of snippets from Tesla CEO Elon Musk. We heard that the Model 3 and Model Y will get a fully vegan interior next year, that Tesla is on track to break its sales and delivery records this quarter, and that Tesla is considering a human driver competitor to Lyft and Uber before an autopilot version launches. At the same time, Musk also promised a 400-mile Tesla was on the way, Tesla's insurance products were also on the way, that the start of Tesla semi-production will be pushed back to next year, and that the Tesla pickup would have a distinct cyberpunk design that would make it look like something out of a sci-fi movie. Cyberpunk. Nice. After years of focusing on hydrogen fuel cell electric cars and saying some not so nice things about battery electric ones, Toyota has announced a roadmap to develop and popularize its own battery electric cars. The plan, which Toyota says is because EVs are being adopted at a far faster rate than it had predicted, includes a new battery electric fleet that it says will launch globally by 2025. These include two crossovers, a wagon, a car, and a couple of boxy city-based vehicles. The vehicles will hit the road five years earlier than Toyota originally planned. Volkswagen has announced a new 900 million euro investment in Swedish battery specialist Northvolt, continuing its recent seemingly never-ending investment program in electric vehicles. The investment will see Volkswagen gain a 20% shareholding in Northvolt, and it will result in a 50-50 joint venture to build a 16 gigawatt hour battery cell facility somewhere in Europe. Details are still to be finalized, but it's hoped the facility will be located in Lower Saxony, Germany, where Volkswagen already has production facilities. As one of Europe's most popular electric cars, the Renault Zoe is starting to look a little long in the tooth. Sure, it's had a steady set of gradual improvements over the years to its motor and powertrain components, as well as a battery pack upgrade. But next week, its successor, the all-new 2020 Renault Zoe, will be revealed. According to specs and photos leaked this week, it will come with a range of up to 400 kilometers, adopt 100 kilowatt CCS quick charging, and get all of the other bits and bobs that you'd expect from a modern electric car. We'll know full specs for sure next week. Rivian has confirmed that it intends to send old, used battery packs from more than 10 years of R&D to Puerto Rico, where they will get a new life in solar energy storage microgrid systems from 2020 onwards. 
Since the battery packs are from development vehicles, they can't be sold privately, which means selling them to Puerto Rico is a really good idea. And since the unincorporated territory has been pretty much ignored by the current US government since the devastating hurricanes 20 months ago, it's a very commendable move as well. The state of California, or rather its Air Resource Board, is considering a new piece of legislation which could put an end to closed access, membership only charging stations. The proposed requirements the proposed requirements will allow membership programs, but will require operators make it possible to charge at any charging station with just a credit card or a smartphone. It will also require an adoption of an interoperable billing standard statewide and clear communication on electricity pricing. A vote on the proposal is expected soon. After receiving more than 31,000 pre-orders, Honda has finally released specs for its upcoming Honda e electric city car. While it's a forbidden fruit and only going to be available in Europe, Honda's rear-wheel drive runabout will feature a 35.5 kilowatt hour battery pack and a range of more than 200 kilometers per charge. CCS quick charging will be standard and the pack itself will be liquid cooled. As a compact city car, that spec list isn't half bad. Using a bicycle rather than a car is not only better for your health and the planet, but it turns out it's better for the city you live in as well. That's according to a new study from the University of Colorado, Denver and the University of New Mexico. Examining 12 cities in the US with populations larger than 400,000 people, the study discovered that cities with higher numbers of cyclists and dedicated cycle lanes Cycle lanes that were regularly used are safer for all road users, reducing accidents overall compared to cities without large cycling populations. So, <laughs> it's time to get on the bike. Lilum, one of several European companies trying to bring electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft to commercial reality, has announced this week that it's chosen London as the headquarters for its brand new software engineering teams. Lilum says it will create hundreds of software engineering jobs across its various departments. Its Lilum Jet seats five, and the company hopes it will be the first to market with a fully autonomous air taxi service for major cities. And finally, while most electric VTOL craft, including the Lilum Jet, are designed for air taxi services, there's also a market, a small one, for personal e VTOL craft. But just like the flying cars before it, they're generally not so affordable. This week, a new personal e VTOL craft was announced in the form of the ASCA from Next Future Transport, or NFT. It's actually a hybrid, using electric motors to lift itself off the ground, but then relying on an internal combustion engine to provide some power for road and air travel. So far, only a scale model exists, but by next year, a prototype is expected to fly. The cost? just 308,000 Kiwi dollars. Ouch. And on that note, I'm going to say goodbye. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. And if you've got some feedback, you can send it our way. Make sure as well that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you're at it, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? Get your home, your business, and your car, if it's got a plug, running on 100% zero emission Kiwi electrons. Thanks for joining me. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kekite. See you next time.